I don't think that one particular point in time can claim to be the birth of everything. But if there is one particular event which defines the new nation, it would have to be Anzac and then our contribution in World War I. It means a lot uh, because we suffered very heavily. Almost every family lost a few members here in Gallipoli, including me, from my family too, died here in Gallipoli. Now, Mike, you're a man with a particular interest in military history. Oh, yes. Yeah. What do you make of the heightened interest in this particular well, battle? I mean, I could strangle Bill Shorten for that. Anzac doesn't define us as a nation. If we are defined as a nation by a military defeat, what a pathetic little nation we'd be. We came to nationhood giving women the vote with the secret ballot, with the, uh, with the basic wage, with a raft of social legislation that put us to the forefront of the world. If we are defined like that by a failed battle led by donkish British generals, British generals, we're a pretty sad little country. I hate the clichés. Greg, do you, would you like to respond to that? Birth of a nation, baptism by fire, it, does it define us? No, well, nothing defines us. Uh, but, Julia, what I'd say is this. Gallipoli has come to stand as the representation and the symbol of all the selfless sacrifice which has been made, not only by our servicemen, but the nurses who, who were there, and indeed by all Australians throughout our history who've found themselves in circumstances that require heroism. And I think the embrace of this, which is popular and genuine and heartfelt by Australians, transcends really uh, any petty politics. And it's the heroism and the sacrifice, the love and the mateship that we celebrate about Gallipoli. Right, and just briefly, 